Hey artists and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how to sculpt your shoe in ZBrush. Just a little warning, before we get started in today's video, I just wanted to let you know that this is much more towards my workflow and the techniques that I use in order to complete the task than a two hour video cropped into 20 minutes. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the video because we all know you don't want to see that face no more. So to begin with, I'm loading the Dynamesh Sphere project to shape the base form of my shoe, kind of like its silhouette. However, I'm not doing anything with it yet since I first want to load my reference pictures using the draw tab, which you can put on the side of the viewport for easy access. So to load the first picture, you can go under front slash back and click on map one. Then by clicking on the import button, you will be able to search on your computer for the reference you want. When this is done, you can do the same about all of your other views, such as up slash down and left and right. What is really important when placing your references is to make sure they match with each other. In other words, have the front be the same size as the back picture by using the modifiers like scale, horizontal, and vertical offset. Or else you're not gonna end up with something that looks like a shoe. Now that everything has been set, I can finally start touching the sphere. With the gizmo tool selected, I first want to stretch the mesh to make it the same length as the sole of the sneaker and then place it at the same level. I'm also making sure that when placing my geometry to fit the reference, my view is on a orthographic one and not an, on a perspective one. Or else, depending on if you're zoomed in or out, it's not going to match the intended look. Always with gizmo selected, I'm switching its function to bend curve. This will allow me to break the flat look and make curves out of it, since shoes are supposed to fit the shape of one's foot. To use this tool correctly, I'm switching its axis to Z by click and drag the cones on the right. And instantly, you can see circles appearing around the flat mesh. You can add as many as you want for more control, once again by playing with the cone on the right. Those allow me to manipulate the surface and mimic the shape of the sole. When satisfied with the look, it's now time to add volume because this definitely doesn't look like the pick on my viewport. To do so, I use both the move tool and the clay bulldog. Although I do like to start with the move tool to lift up the geometry and create the mass that I want. The only problem is that when I lift up the mesh, it is taking the whole model with it and not only the faces on top. To fix that issue, I simply go in my brush settings under the mask tab and highlight back face mask. When activated, I will be able to only move around the faces on top, keeping the soles shape as it is. All right, so I'm going to speed things up here a bit and show you the final results since I'm only moving slash sculpting the mesh to make it look like my reference using once again, the move tool and the build up tool. As you can see, this is far from the final result. It's not supposed to look detailed, clean, or beautiful. This is a raw model to send in Maya and use Quadra on it to retopologize. It is with the clean topology that I will subdivide to add details such as stitches, scratches, and other layers of the shoe. The model has now been imported in Maya and is ready to be treated. Our main goal here is to use Quadra on it to create a new topology. I want to make this as clean as possible because in my case, I will use this as a low resolution model to send in Marmoset and have its high poly baked on. You can find Quadra under the modeling toolkit. For those who are not familiar with Quadra, I thought I could show some hotkeys which are pretty necessary to use that tool. You will begin to create vertices by clicking on your model with your left mouse button. When you have about three to four points, you can use shift in the middle of those to create a face. To extrude one edge, use tap with the left mouse button. Finally, if you want to extrude an entire loop edge, it's tab and the middle mouse button. 
Something else that can be useful is if you want to move more than one vertices around, is to click on B on your keyboard to soft select. You can click on B and drag with the middle mouse to make the selection bigger or smaller as well. Okay, so here is the final clean model. I think you get the point of how I did this, so no need to show the entire process of me creating new topology. We are now at the part where we want to add the different pieces that make the shoe, such as the mudguard, the quarter panel, heel stabilizer, etc, etc. So there are actually two ways of doing this, the first being in Maya, once again with Draw, and the other one being using ZBrush with the masking tool. Let's begin with the first version since the software is already opened. For the first method, we will begin by loading the reference in Maya's viewport. Simply change the view to an orthographic one, then go to View, Image Plane, Import, Image. Scale the pick for it to correspond to the 3D model, and when it's ready, you can create a layer for the image to not be accidentally selected while working on Quad Draw to recreate the shape of the different pieces. As you can see in this scene, I have already some topology drawn on my model. So like we did before with the retopology, I'm selecting the shoes mesh and making it live to be able to use Quad Draw on it. The goal is to create the different pieces that make the shoe by drawing them using Quad Draw. So let's say I want to do a triangle looking piece on the shoe. I'm simply going to draw the silhouette and then use shift to fill the inside. Now, I did this pretty quickly just to give you an example, but I did a better job of recording to show you how it looked. After they are all done, I would simply extrude them before sending them in ZBrush. So these are the pieces I decided to make using Quattro before sending the shoe back in ZBrush. I thought that when it comes to that wavy design I'm now selecting on the shoe, it was going to be easier done in Maya. Finally back in ZBrush, I'm sure now you're just excited to get to that level of detail, but I first have to show you how I made the rest of the pieces using the masking tool. So after importing my mesh from Maya, I subdivided it, then once again use the draw tab to show the shoe as a reference. By the way, the amount of time I say reference in shoe is crazy and I'm sorry about that. Uh, once everything is in place, I can finally start drawing the shape with the masking tool. All I'm doing now is clean up the mask so it doesn't look wavy. The shape has a clean curve and no waves in it. I can use the extract button to give it some volume. Another problem you may encounter is have the masking tool affect both sides of the mesh. As you can see here, no matter what I do, I'm affecting both sides of the mesh with the brush. So I need to go in my brush setting and activate back face masking. Once I did, I can finally extrude the mask with no double side, though you can end up with small artifact. To remove them, I simply went in my polygroup tab and clicked auto polygroup then hid all the random pieces by clicking on them with Ctrl Shift and Delete Hidden. This is the part where I think using Maya Squad Draw is doing a better job since I don't have to fix anything except make sure the topology looks good. In ZBrush, I ended up with artifacts and now I have to fix the unwanted wave on the edge of the mesh that have been extracted. First of all, I'm going to zero mesh to have fewer polygons. This will make moving the vertices around easier. You can do it a couple of times to have a smoother result. After I get my low resolution mesh, I'm just moving vertices around to match the picture. It's not clean enough for me, especially when it comes to the edges. So what I like to do is to create a group for all the quads on the front, isolate them, 
And finally, delete hidden. Now I can fix one more time using the move tool so it is well adjusted to the shoe and finally extrude. Because I'm going to subdivide this, I'm now adding some bevels to have crisp edges. All right, so now for the cherry on the cake, the details. To be sure to undo whatever detail you sculpt, I suggest you create a layer so everything won't be destructible. Now you can add stitches, scratches, and etc. I also recommend using a mesh stitch brush if you're planning on baking it to have color ID on the stitches. For what's left, Everything that looks like extrudes, I mostly use an alpha to project on the high resolution mesh. Or I use the inflate tool while masking a specific area. And finally, for the rest of the shoe details, what I did is to create seamless textures to project on my model and have the different design. And to have them at specific places, I used the masking lasso tool. So that is pretty much it for my workflow. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below if you have any suggestions on what I should do for my next topic. And uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos because I'll this is, this, this is definitely not the last one. Other than that, you can follow me on my social media, Instagram, art station they'll be down below so yeah this is it guys i'll be seeing you in the next video so until then be creative